It is our pleasure to present Form 3 work as tested in the year 2022. This is 233 stroke 1 chemistry paper 1. Now, contents of Form 3 syllabus were tested in nine questions. These questions had a total of 24 marks that translates to 30% of the total score in Chemistry Paper 1 for the year. So the question numbers are as tabulated in this table together with the corresponding marks. It is our pleasure to take you through the expected responses to these questions in this short video. Kindly welcome and we ask that you stay on until the end. We begin with question number five, part A, which was borrowed from Organic Chemistry 1. So, in question 5, part A, we are told that the structure of compound A is as drawn here. So, a candidate is supposed to realize that this compound is actually an alkene because the carbon atoms are actually linked to one another via single covalent bonds. So we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 carbon atoms, and we are supposed to have a total of 22 hydrogens. That make it an alkene with 10 carbons, and for that matter, we call these decane. And obviously, the first question that was asked is we are supposed to give the name of the compound that we have just gone through. It has 10 carbon atoms and 22 hydrogens. And for that matter, the name becomes decane for one mark. For A part 2, we are told to give its empirical formula. Now, the molecular formula usually gives the actual ratio of carbon to hydrogen atoms. And we have seen this to be 10 to 22. This is the molecular formula. So when we are asked to give the empirical formula, empirical formula is supposed to give the simplest ratio of the carbon to hydrogen atoms. So for this part, a candidate was supposed to give the simplest ratio, which in this case is 5 to 11 for the next mark. Now, 5 part B was borrowed from form 4, and because we are discussing form 3 work in this video, we shall exclude question 5 part B. This was bordered from alkanoic acid group that is normally discussed in Form 4. With that, we proceed to our next question, borrowed from Form 3 work, and that is question number 8. Question 8 came from the topic, the mole. Question number 8. The mass of one molecule of a hydrocarbon is given as 9.33 times 10 to power negative 23 grams. The question went ahead to give us the Avogadro's number which is 6.0 times 10 to power 23. And then the relative atomic mass of carbon is 12 and that of hydrogen is 1. First part of the question. 
we are asked to determine the molecular mass of our hydrocarbon. What a student should know here is that molecular mass of the hydrocarbon should contain the Avogadro's number of molecules. So to answer this question, a candidate was to argue that if one molecule if one molecule weighs 9.33 times 10 to power negative 23 grams, how much or how many grams would we have in the Avogadro's number of molecules? This would give us what mass? So doing cross multiplication, we would have 6.0 times 10 to power 23 multiplied by 9.33 times 10 to power negative 23 and then we divide by 1. If we do this mathematics, we should get 5, 5.98 5 and this would be rounded off to the nearest whole number which would be 56. So a half a mark for the multiplication and a half a mark for the answer, totaling one mark for question number 8A, Roman 1. For part A, Roman 2, asking us to do the molecular formula for our hydrocarbon, the examiner expected the candidate to try out the general formulae for the three homologous series of the hydrocarbons, beginning with the alkanes. So we would equate these to the molecular mass that we have just calculated up here. This is the general formula for alkanes. We would try this out if we fail to get a whole number n, then our hydrocarbon would not be an alkene. We would then do the next general formula for alkenes. Try that again until we reach a case where N turns out to be a whole number. So if we use the general formula for alkenes, and assuming that X is 1, we would have C for 1, and H would be 4. That would be 2 times 1 plus 2, giving us 4. Then to N, then we equate this to 56. If we do this, we would have 12 plus 4. That is 16N, giving us 56. N would be 56 divided by 16, and that would be 3.5. Not a very good ratio because it is not whole number. For that matter, we cancel out the possibility of our hydrocarbon being an alkane. Then we proceed now to the next homologous series, which is alkenes. Alkenes have the general formula CXH2X. So if we do this n times, we should get 56. We try this out if our n would be a whole number. Now, assuming x is 1, for the simplest alkene, we would have C H 2 into n giving us 56. If we do this, we are supposed to get 12 plus 2. That is 14n giving us 56. When we do the division, we get n is 4. Now a whole number. For that matter, most probably our hydrocarbon was an alkene. And if n is 4, it then means that the molecular formula of our hydrocarbon will then be C4H8 for one mark.
we need not to proceed to try out alkynes because up to this point we've gotten a case where our n is a whole number so half for n being 4 and a half for our molecular formula so the examiner expected the candidate to be a little bit more creative here by trying out the general formulae for the various homologous series of hydrocarbons that we discuss in form 3. Now, for part B, we are now told to draw the structure of the hydrocarbon that we've just got in part A. That is C4H8. So the first structure would be that of but one in but one in would have this structure here that is c4 and h8 but one in if that would not be in the mind of the candidate we would think of drawing but two in that would still have the formula of C4H8 and the isomer, the isomer of this one, which would be 2-methyl prop 1 in, can still be an acceptable structure for the one mark that was being awarded for question 8, part B. So we expected a candidate to draw either but one in, but two in, or two methyl prop one in for that one mark. We proceed to the next question, and that is question number 10. Question 10 was borrowed from nitrogen and its compounds, specifically on ammonia gas. A sample of ammonia gas can be prepared by heating a mixture of ammonium bromide and barium hydroxide. The first question is asking us to write a balanced equation. So we have ammonium bromide which would be a solid being reacted with barium hydroxide which is also a solid we would obtain barium bromide in aqueous state together with ammonia gas and we would get some water as well these we would balance with a two on ammonium bromide a 2 on ammonia gas and a 2 on water for one mark. Of course, the state for the barium bromide would either be aqueous, acceptable or solid. And again, for water, we would accept liquid instead of gas as well as state symbol for that. But B. State why the gas cannot be dried using anhydrous calcium chloride. This we have said over and over again that ammonia reacts with calcium chloride. Ammonia reacts with calcium chloride to form complex salt to form a complex salt with this formula calcium chloride ammonia so that is the reason why we cannot use ammonia i mean we cannot use calcium chloride to dry ammonia that would earn ourselves the one mark for that section then the question ended by now asking us to name now a suitable drying agent we can use calcium oxide which a candidate would call quick lime as well. And we can also use silica gel to dry our gas. Any of those three for one mark. 
We proceed to question number 13, part B, which asked us about gas laws. It takes 44 seconds for nitrogen 4 oxide gas to effuse through an opening. We are asked to calculate how long it will take an equal volume of chlorine gas to effuse through the same opening with the relative atomic masses given as additional information. So this is a question asking on Graham's law of diffusion and therefore we would go straight to the formula that relates time to the relative molecular masses. And I want you to take note of the positioning of my gases in question. That would be the correct formula. So once we have gotten the correct formula, we are supposed to substitute the values that we have in the question. Time for nitrogen 4 oxide is 44. Time for chlorine is what we are looking for. And relative molecular mass for nitrogen 4 oxide would be 14 plus 32, giving me 46. And for chlorine would be 35.5 times 2, giving me 71. Now, to solve for TCl2, it would be mathematical from this point. So to remove the root, I would square both sides. Square of 44 is 1936. Square of time for chlorine remains. Square of time of chlorine. And on the right hand side, my square root symbol would go away after I square. From here, I can go for the time of chlorine, which would be given by the root of 1936, multiplied by 71, divided by 46. On a good calculator, this is supposed to give us 54.66 seconds for our answer. How do we earn the two marks? A half a mark for the correct relative molecular mass, NO2. A half a mark, correct relative molecular mass, Cl2. A half a mark for the root to give us time of chlorine. And finally, a half a mark for the answer. We proceed to question number 17. Question 17, still tested the topic of the mole. The formula of a hydrated salt of manganese is manganese sulfate X water. Given that the salt contains 24.7% manganese only, we were expected to, defer, to determine the value of X. A very, very tricky question, but so easy. So what happens here is we would use the atomic mass of manganese, which has been given here as 55. If we find the percentage contribution of manganese, in the relative formula mass of the whole salt, then we should arrive at 24.7. So the working would be relative atomic mass of manganese 55 over the total RFM of our hydrated salt. If we multiplied this by 100%, we are supposed to arrive at 24.7. That is the interpretation that the examiner expected from the candidate. From here, we can easily get our RFM by multiplying 55 by 100 and then we divide by 24.7. I'm leaving out some mathematical steps which I believe our candidates would follow. This would give us an RFM of 222.7. From here, we would then argue out that 
M N S O four X water should give us a relative formula mass of two 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 point seven. Then we can get the relative formula mass of our anhydrous manganese salt, manganese sulfate. We know manganese is fifty five. We know sulfur is thirty two. And we know four oxygen atoms would be 64. That gives us a total of 151. So what it means is that only my water of crystallization, this part here, would have a mass of 222.7 minus 151. And that should give me 71.7. .7. From here... I'm able to get my X water being equal to 71.7. .7. And we know water is 18. So then I can get my X as 71.7 .7 divided by 18. And that gives 3.98, which is approximately 4. For 3 marks. Now, I have a mark for getting that relation that would give me the RFM. A half a mark for the actual RFM. One whole mark for getting the relative formula mass of the anhydra salt. A half again for doing the subtraction here. And finally, a half for the final answer. That is three marks. Very tricky but easy question on empirical versus molecular formulae as discussed in Form 3. We proceed to question number 20. Question 20 is set from the topic of chlorine and its compounds. Draw a labeled diagram of a setup that can be used to prepare a dry sample of chlorine gas using potassium manganate 7 and concentrated hydrochloric acid. So the space that the examiner left for the question was a bit squeezed and that's why I had to draw the diagram earlier. What remains now is just label. So down here we shall have our oxidizing agent manganese 4 oxide and here we shall put in our concentrated concentrated hydrochloric acid of course my thistle funnel has to be dipped into the solution to prevent escape route for the gas this would be water of course to absorb the acid fumes and here we shall have our drying agent which happens to be concentrated sulfuric 6 acid then we shall be able now to collect dry chlorine of course you can use downward delivery method or you can use a syringe it is three marks labeling one mark workability has to do with answering the question of if we look at the setup is it able to produce chlorine are the delivery tubes closed? Is the thistle funnel hanging? Those are some of the questions that we ask before we award the mark on workability. And finally, the third mark would come from the method of collection, either downward delivery or use of a syringe. With that, we move to question number 22. Question 22 tested on qualitative analysis using aqueous ammonia and sodium sulfate solutions. Complete table 5 by writing the observations made when aqueous ammonia and aqueous sodium sulfate are added to solutions containing calcium, aluminium and ion 2 ions. We begin with calcium on aqueous ammonia or aqueous ammonia on calcium ions. This we have always said in form 3 that we would see no 
white precipitate. Allow me to use PPT because of space, though it's not a scientific abbreviation. For aqueous sodium sulfate, we know calcium sulfate is an insoluble salt or rather a partially soluble salt. So we would be able to observe some white precipitate for that part. Moving to aluminium on aqueous ammonia, we know that aluminium would form a white precipitate with ammonia. Aluminium sulfate is a soluble salt, so there would be no white precipitate. For iron 2, aqueous ammonia, we would see green precipitate. And for sodium sulfate, there would be no green precipitate. I have excused myself to abbreviate PPT so as to fix my answers in the small space. But candidates, PPT is not a scientific abbreviation and let us try to avoid using it. Each is half mark, total three marks. We proceed to question number 25 borrowed from a Form 3 topic of nitrogen and its compounds. Specifically, the question tested on manufacture of nitric 5 acid from ammonia gas. Figure 3 shows how nitric 5 acid can be obtained. So we have ammonia, air, chamber 1, then Z comes out. Obviously, this is nitrogen 2 oxide. To chamber 2, we add more oxygen, which changes it to nitrogen 4 oxide. We add water, we obtain nitric 5 acid, and then gas Z goes back to chamber 2. This is actually unreacted nitrogen 2 oxide. First question. Identify the chamber in which a catalyst is used. So to obtain nitrogen 2 oxide from ammonia, that is when we do catalytic oxidation. And for that matter, the answer here is obviously chamber 1 for one mark. Substance Z, we've agreed, is nitrogen 2 oxide for one mark as well. And then now we are told to write an equation for the reaction that takes place in chamber 3. Chamber 3 is where we obtain nitric 5 acid from our nitrogen 4 oxide. So here we know nitrogen 4 oxide gas would react with water and we produce nitric 3 acid together with nitric 5 acid. So a balanced equation would be 2 or nitrogen 4 oxide and that would be the first equation that a candidate would think of. We know that nitric 3 acid is usually oxidized further to form nitric 5 acid. This would be balanced with a 2 or nitric 3 acid and a 2 or nitric 5 acid. Then, from these two equations, we can obtain an overall equation for the reaction whereby nitrogen 4 oxide would react with water and oxygen to form now directly our nitric 5 acid. This would be balanced with a 4 on nitrogen 4 oxide, a 2 on water, and a 4 on nitric 5 acid. So for this part, a candidate had an option of writing equation 1 for one mark or our overall equation for the same one mark. So the last question from Form 3 syllabus was question number 27. Copper can be obtained from copper 2 oxide using carbon 2 oxide 
or cork. We are told to name another reagent that can be used to reduce copper to oxide. There are quite a number. We have hydrogen gas. We have ammonia, can be used as well. And we can use methane or even natural gas. All these for the first mark. Then for part B, we are given now the equation for the reduction of copper two oxide using carbon two oxide. There it goes. The mole ratios one is to one for the products and the reactants as well. So we are now asked to calculate the mass of copper that would be obtained if we used 200 liters of carbon two oxide. The first thing we do here is to find moles of carbon two oxide. This would be 200 liters divided by 24 liters which happens to be the molar gas volume that gives 8.3333 moles and because mole ratio is one is to one it means moles of copper that we shall obtain are also 8.3333 to get mass we simply multiply the number of moles of copper by the relative atomic mass given as 63.5 we get a mass of 529.1666 grams two marks one whole mark for the division a half for the multiplication and a half for the final answer thank you so much for being with us until the end of our video we ask that you keep it right here for more insightful reviews of past kcse questions thank you